You are the heir to the throne of Durin. Man, does anyone in Middle-earth do anything at all without Gandalf putting the idea in their head? The only reason you're saying this is because we, the audience, have seen so many examples of Gandalf pushing people into something. And the reason for that is because Gandalf is one of the main characters in this story. We only focus on these instances, but they are not the only instances. The feet of a fire-breathing dragon. I can't stress enough how much light this conversation sheds on the events we saw in the first film. It's zero. Actually, it does explain why Thorin decided to take back Erebor. I'm not saying it was necessary for the movie, I'm just saying that CinemaSins is full of shit. They're run down by a pack of orcs. You could maybe try calling the Eagles. I mean, sh it can't have gotten too far away since they just dropped you off a little bit ago. Here's another reason the books don't matter, when the filmmakers can't insert just one sentence explaining why the Eagles could only take them so far. And that's all it would have taken. Let's take this one thing at a time. First, the Eagles could not take them farther because they didn't want to. The book explains that the Eagles are sentient and are not simply servants for Gandalf. This leads me into my next point, which is that the books absolutely do matter. Because that is where you get the explanations for shit like this. Furthermore, how the hell is this an example of the books not mattering? You literally just asked a question. And lastly, you essentially just send the exact same thing twice to pad the sin count. He will help us, or he will kill us. Why does Gandalf waste time acting like the bear beast thing isn't Bayorn, the owner of the house they decide to go to in order to seek refuge from the bear beast thing? Oh, I don't know, Jeremy. Maybe because of exactly what you just said, Bayorn is the beast, and they are currently running from the beast. So the dwarves would obviously not want to go to his house if Gandalf revealed this. You know what would have really helped in this situation? Someone who knows magic. Dude, since when has Gandalf's magic been powerful enough to stop a mythical fucking bear? Also, they are literally entering a safe house right now, so why are you acting like they need to fight? This bold guy is a discount Azog. He looks exactly like Azog, but with metal in his flesh. Where are you getting this pronunciation from? His name is Azog, not Azog. Is there no way around? Not unless we go 200 miles north. Middle-earth uses miles for distance measurement? Why the hell not? What's the problem with this? We interrupt this unnecessary Hobbit sequel to bring you the Lost World Jurassic Park. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference. Oh, come on. How did Bilbo get access to his sword after being spun into a cocoon? I mean, look at this. Does this look like something anyone would be able to move their arms and legs around in? Also, Bilbo would have had to have easy access to his sword to be able to unsheathe it while inside a cocoon, and he clearly didn't have it out when he got caught in the web. These two sins are literally the exact same sin. How do people not realize that they're padding the sin count? It's also fortunate that there are all these layers of spider web to catch each of the falling dwarves and ease them to the ground, especially considering the spider that Bilbo just stabbed fell down and hit the ground hard. The reason the spider hit the ground hard was because he was too heavy for the webs to catch him, and they broke during his fall whereas the dwarves are light enough to be caught on the way down. Oh, come on, that thing fell and bounced and is definitely lost forever. If you're going to say the ring wants to be found because it has a mind of its own, then it shouldn't ever fly out of his control in the f***ing first place. This sin is incredibly stupid. The ring does want to be found, and that's how Bilbo ends up finding it. As for your claim that it should not have fallen out in the first place, do you see any hands on the ring that could have held onto Bilbo's pocket? No? Okay, so your point is moot. Oh look, Legolas is in this movie. Is Batman in it too? Or 007? Two pop culture references in one sin. Aren't you going to search me? I could have anything down my trousers. That's a pickup line I have not tried, but I'm going to now. Jeremy sin something he likes, cliche. Also, why does Legolas give a shit that this dwarf is staring at her? Because he was just flirting with her, and he loves her? Seriously, it doesn't take a genius to figure this out. I have walked there sometimes. Beyond the forest and up into the night. Good God, this movie is two and a half hours, and now we know why. Because of this one single scene? How does that make sense? Is this the unguarded gate that Bolg was talking about? Because this shit is heavily guarded. You're saying that the gate is heavily guarded, when in reality, it's actually pretty lightly guarded. That's obviously what Bolg was referring to, and that's why they attacked this gate specifically. So how convenient is it that she pulls off this badass shot instead of killing him since Legolas wants to keep this orc alive anyway? Look, the shot was incredibly unrealistic, but you sinned it for being convenient because of them wanting to question the orc. And that's bullshit, 
because Tariel was obviously specifically aiming for the arrow and not the orc because she wanted to save Legolas's life. They're being led on by troublemakers. Then we must find these troublemakers. There was a huge pause in the conversation while the master got up, walked out of his bedroom, and halfway down the stairs before responding. Or, and hear me out, maybe the movie just cut to them walking, and the implication is that he responded normally, and the audio is simply overlaid on them walking. Wait, does this family shit directly into the lake? Yes. Next question. How many weapons does this guy need to carry? Couldn't they just pass them down to the steer dwarves outside and make a quiet pile? But that would take a lot longer than having everyone carry a bunch of weapons with them. They're going for speed. We've lost the light. There's no more to be done. Bull shit. We walked all this f***ing way and nearly died a million times. Give me the f***ing key and I'll drag it along the rock until it hits a keyhole. The point is that the door is magic. It doesn't matter if you drag the key along every single inch of the wall. You still wouldn't find it. Oh, now we see why it took so long for Boffer to get the king's foil. It's so that She-Elf could save Handsome Dwarf and serve the love story. This is the exact same sin as you had before, when you sinned the timing of Boffer finding the king's foil. Stop double dipping. If Toriel doesn't show up, how do they expect to use the king's foil? It looks like it requires a lot of chanting and special elf leg rubbing and glowing. In the Fellowship of the Ring, Aragorn gives Frodo some king's foil, and it sustains him until they get to Rivendell. Obviously, the King's Foil helps without the elven magic, but it's more effective with it. It's almost like they wrote the script for the dwarves to escape and then designed the set to match. Jesus, it's like the world's most elaborate dragon escape system built centuries in advance of its being needed. Holy shit, he sinned the same things multiple times so much in this video, I'm just gonna add 10 sins and move on. No, I sure hope Legolas lives through this... Oh wait, he's in Fellowship. So this is a pointless bit of fluff. But we don't know what happens to Bolg, so it's possible that he could die. Fire-resistant, fire-escaping rope. It's a metal cable, so why the fuck should the fire be burning it? Oh, sure. Now use your fire. <sighs> Double dipping. F***ing fire! Use your f***ing fire! And triple dipping. Sure was lucky the dwarves were working on a giant gold statue way back in the day. They weren't. This is what our dwarves were doing to fight smog. The fact that it falls apart into a pool of molten gold should be the tip-off. What the f*** is this bull? It's gold melting. Seriously, little kids understood this shit. There was gonna be that hell to pay, HTP, back when I swore to the G.O.D.